to everyone in the name of Jesus. Saints, we just want to say that we love you so much. Amen. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being who you are, Lord. We thank you for being worthy to be praised, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us through the night, waking us in the morning light. Lord, I thank you for the tongue of the learner on today, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will search our hearts on today, our minds. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us a well-made-up mind and a fixed heart to keep running, to keep going. I thank you, Lord God, for those that will come into the live and those that may listen later. I pray, Lord God, that you will have your divine way in their life, Lord. That you will continue to order their steps, Lord. That you will continue, Lord God, to answer their prayers, Lord. Nevertheless, thy will be done. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to rise on this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that you give us, Lord God, on today. We pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would allow your kingdom to come in us and your will to be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tell you what, saints. There's a word that the Lord gave me. And this word is discern. Amen. And we're living in a time now where we need to be able to discern. Amen. We need to be able to discern. Remember a couple of days ago, the Lord was letting us know that there are levels to this. Amen. There are levels to this. There, there are levels to faith. There are levels to truth. There are levels to righteousness. There are levels to salvation. There are levels to love. Do you believe that? Do you know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Is that right? Well, why is it that there are those that are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven and then there are those that are not, if God loved the world. Is there levels to his love? Because there are those, again, that will enter into the kingdom of heaven, and then there are those that will not. But it does not change God being love. There are levels to this. There were 30 fold. 60-fold, 100-fold. 30 should always be trying to get to 60. And 60 should always be trying to get to 100. And 100 should always be striving to stay there or to grow above. Amen. Why? Because it's easy to get at ease in Zion. Amen. It's easy to get at ease in Zion, the Lord gave me the word discern. The discerning of spirits. And in this last day, you and I have to know that we know that we know that we know that the Lord is in our discerning because he showed me the levels of that we're going to have to go to, saints, in discerning. And one of the next levels in Bluetooth, discerning, Bluetooth connected. one of the levels into, into discerning, I'm going to share with you an example that the Lord gave me. And I want to ask you, who do you think God favors in this scenario? All right. 
So there is one person, and this person read, has read the scripture, and this person interpreted the scripture wrongly. <clears throat> The person read the scripture, just say they had to teach, all right? Just say they had a, a teaching engagement. Just say they had a, a conference. Say they had a, a speaking engagement. You get my drift. And this person has to speak. And the scripture that they study, they get up, they minister the scripture, they say some words about it, they rock the house, so to speak, rock the house, rock the house. They go back to their secret quarters or changing quarters. They get back in prayer. Lord, I thank you for what you did today. Thank you, Lord God, for gracing the service. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. And the Lord tells them, you didn't. You didn't interpret that scripture right. Huh? You you didn't. That's not what I meant in my word. And this person becomes distraught. Oh my God. Oh my God. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please forgive me. You just sat down from being in front of 500 to 600 people, 3,000 to 4,000 people, 20,000 people. And the Lord says, you didn't interpret that scripture right. Meaning, your, the whole message right, was founded off of this scripture that you didn't interpret right. This person is distraught. Oh, my God. Lord, please forgive me. Oh, my God. They rip open the Bible. Look at the scripture. They're like, Lord, look, show me. Do you know, before I go into it, and then you can have another person well versed in the scriptures, know exactly whatever scripture is, and they, they can help, help you find your scripture, right? And they can get up and they can teach and they can preach and they can prophesy. And the foundation of what they're saying is almost all the way true, but it's not quite all the way true. And you can take that individual and you can show them in the word where that's not quite all the way true. And they'll say, this is fine. This is what God gave me. This is what I was taught. And this is what we're going with. Who do you think God favors in this situation, in this scenario? Which one of these people do you believe God favors? Do we believe God favor us because we're well-versed? What good is it to be well-versed when nobody else, the Lord can use nobody else to show us our error, the error of our ways? Who do you think the Lord favors in this situation? Shockingly, the Lord favors the one who got up, taught the scripture wrong, understood the scripture wrong, got up, taught 500, 600 people, 2,000, 3,000 people, 
24,000 people went back to their secret quarters. The Lord says that was not, that was wrong. The way you interpreted that scripture, that's not what, that's not what I meant in my word. And this person is distraught. Oh my God, Lord, please forgive me. And praying and feeling really bad. Well, the Lord would favor this person in this scenario over the one that is well versed, well script, can quote scripture from top to bottom. Yet you cannot, you cannot show them the error of their ways. You cannot. Because once a person feels like they're 99.1% right, a lot of times we feel like that's good enough. It's never good enough. Because Jesus is 100% truth. Now, in our carnal mind and in our carnal flesh, we would crucify the one that got up and interpreted that scripture wrong. Says not so. We would literally crucify the one that got up interpreted the scripture wrong with a pure heart interpreted the scripture wrongly with the right spirit interpreted that scripture wrongly we get up we would beat them down why because most often times most people are looking to judge somebody else that's our spirit. A lot of times our spirit is to find somebody else wrong, to accuse, to judge, to point. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking the Lord and actually discerning the spirit to say, did this man, did this lady really try to lead us astray? Or was this a mistake on their part? Well, you should study to show yourself approved. Did this man or woman try to lead us astray? Because there's a spirit be behind someone. Thank you for those hearts. Love you so much. There's a spirit behind those that try to lead the body of Christ astray. There's a spirit behind a person like that. And then there's a spirit behind someone that got up, didn't quite, they felt like the Lord gave them the interpretation of the scripture. They got up with a pure heart, a right spirit. They are witnessing with a pure heart, a right spirit, but yet they didn't get it quite right. We would crucify a person like that. Not caring that this person's spirit is not defiled. It's not. There are levels to discerning spirits. Okay, so what does discern mean? It means to perceive or recognize something. The discerning of spirits to perceive or to recognize something. I perceive that you are a prophet. I perceive that you are a prophetess. I perceive that you are a man of God, a daughter of Zion. I perceive that you love children and you love to be around children. I perceive that you love the elderly and you like to be around the elderly. Right? It means I've studied to know. And many times we say we have the spirit of discernment. We do not study to know. When have we studied to know? Can I tell you something? We don't study to know a person's spirit. We study to know what a person has. And if a person has a whole lot, their, their spirit is automatically right. And that is not correct. If a person looks like they have a house on the hill, a nice car, some money. We do not study that person's spirit. And most often times, 
There's a spirit to lead people astray. It's 99.1% correct. And they know that other percent is not correct. They're fine with it. Do you know that you will be judged for that? Be judged for that. Most oftentimes, our flesh gets in the way of discerning. A person come and and interpret a scripture incorrectly. And that person don't seem like they have much. Don't seem like they're worth much because they don't have much. We would crucify them. We would crucify them. But you take that same scripture and let somebody that look like they have much misinterpret that scripture. And people will give them a pass. So my question is this. Do we really, as daughters and sons of God, do we really exercise the spirit of discernment? Or are we so caught up with what we see? If we're caught up, saints, with what we see, that's a problem. Because we are disobeying the scriptures. When the Lord said, walk by faith and not by sight. Because anytime we're walking by faith, according to script, discernment is going to be there. Amen. Discernment is going to be there. We'll be able to perceive that this person didn't quite understand that. And there'll be somebody to go up to him and say, you know what? I really didn't enjoy the service. I saw your heart, man of God. I saw your heart, Lord of Zion. In this scripture, the way the Lord gave it to me is bump, 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 bump. The scripture, when it's interpreted correctly, it turns on the light. Mm Mm-hmm. The scripture, when it's interpreted correctly, it lights up the room. And if the scripture, which is spirit, can light up a natural room, the scripture, which is spirit, can light up an individual. And if an individual has been in the dark concerning a certain scripture, and the Lord used you, of all people, to bring light to that scripture. There are those that were wrong that didn't know. These allow the light to come in and say, Lord, thank you for revelation. But many times when discerning spirits, people that do not have the right spirit, they shun revelation. They do not want an enlightenment. Why? Because it's good the way it is. It's good the way I've read it. It's going to stay the way I've been saying it. Because I don't want people to think I've been wrong. i tell you what. Is it better that the people see that I've been wrong? Or is it better for the Lord to tell me on judgment day, you were wrong? I believe it's better to set pride aside, to set flesh aside, and to allow the Lord. If you and me stop allowing the enlightenment of revelation to enter into our lives, into our temples, does that make us sons and daughters of God? It does not, saints. We can go on and we can look nice and we can preach and we can teach, but once we stop allowing the Lord to enlighten us, once we stop allowing the word of God to be the lamp and the law, the light, We have forfeited 
being sons of God. Because once we deny the light of the word, we begin to walk in darkness. We begin to walk a course that is out of the will of God. When he says at this time, when you're at this age, on this date, I'm going to give you the revelation of this scripture. And there are those of us that would say, well, on this time, on this date, when I'm this age, I'm going to reject the revelation. And many times we don't say that. But because the way we go on, when it's time for the Lord to enlighten us, we reject it. We reject the word of God because we are good enough at 99.1. When the Lord says, I'll have you perfect. Well, it's perfect the way we've been doing it. The Lord says, I'll have you perfect in my sight. What is the use of living if we are not going to become better as a people? What is the use of Of breathing God's precious air. If nothing anybody else says can help us. What is the use of saying we are sons and daughters of God. If we do not allow the spirit of discernment to take its place in our lives. Mm. a lot of times we believe the discerning of spirits is looking at an outward appearance of someone and saying well that's a whore that's a pimp that's somebody that's still alive that's somebody that can't stand Christians that's somebody that's this and that's somebody that's that there are levels to this and many times we can uh, we can discern when the same person that misquoted the scripture or the same person that interpreted it wrongly purely they purely interpreted the scripture wrong meaning they did not want and desire to lead nobody astray they had no plans at all To lead anybody away from the throne of grace. They thought they were helping someone find the throne of grace. So to be wrong in a right way. Is that possible? To be wrong in a righteous way. It's possible when we allow correction. It's possible. When we are repentant, after we find out that was wrong. It's possible when we don't get pride because we found out that was wrong. Well, this is what I know and this is what I know. No. No. The spirit of discernment. There are many that have been beat. Because you missed a V and a thou. You put thou where D was supposed to go and you put D where thou was supposed to go. Well, that ain't quite what it say. Right? And we major and minors and minor and majors. And who is discerning the spirit of a man? Because in order to reach this level of discernment, it takes love. 
it takes the fruits of the spirit long suffering. Because to be honest, you and I sometimes we can have discernment and we can we can go to a new level of discernment when it comes to people we like. If somebody I like get up and speak and misinterpret the scripture a little bit, expound on it a little bit wrongly. I have the grace to cover them. And I discern that they really not meaning any harm. I just need to get with them and let them know, hey, this right here was really meaning this because this happened in Judges and this happened in Ruth and this happened in First Chronicles. And so because this happened in Judges, Ruth, and First Chronicles, then when you get over here to Malachi, this is what this, this, and this meant. That all the books are connected. You just have to do line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And then you have to pray and allow the Lord to lead you on what to say. But the message as a whole, hey, it was beautiful. It's just this little snippet right here. We won't do that for everybody. <laughs> we, 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 we don't do that for everybody because we as a people, we don't have the same love for folks. Oh, he tried to do that. She tried to do that. Well, maybe the one that you got love for tried to do that. So when we say we discern, the Lord has given me the gift to discern spirits. Has he really given us the gift to discern spirits? Because can I tell you something? Discerning spirits is not just a proud look. It's not just a, I have a magnifying glass. And I'm going to watch everything. And just as soon as I see you do something wrong, you can blink wrong. Just as soon as I see it, I'm going in. I'm bringing my hammer. I'm going to tear everything down. No. The spirit of the true spirit of discernment that the Lord is giving his people today. This discernment is coming with love. Do you hear me? The discernment is coming with patience. Mm -hmm. The discernment is coming with long suffering. It is. And through this, we'll be able to discern correctly. You are a foul individual. You know why? Because you know you going around preaching this. And you know it's a lie. You know you're going around witnessing the people, telling them this and that. And you know that you stretch the scriptures way out of proportion. But you have chose your heaven on earth, even though people can't stand you and folks don't like you. You have chose your heaven on earth and you have chose damnation for your eternal you know why? Because you feel like people won't be able to recognize you burning. People won't know if I didn't make it to heaven or not. Yes, they will. I just believe they will. That's us, saints. Some of us feel like it's okay because we've allowed our flesh to get out of hand. And when we allow our flesh to get out of hand, we feel like it's okay to stretch the scripture in order to, and a lot of times this is what happens because the scripture, the scriptures are clothing. And because the scriptures are clothing, We'll use the scriptures, we'll read the scriptures, and we try to put them on us like clothes, garments. We try to put it on us. And when we are not walking in the enlightenment of the word, allowing the word to be the lamp into our feet and the light into our path, when when just say, um, great grandmama and the great grandmama and the grandmama before that, just say, they had the lamp and they had the light. But every time they got to a certain avenue, 
the light went out because great, great, great grandmama them, they didn't understand this part of the word. So every time they went to cross this part, this, this bridge, the light was out. Okay. But at least they were trying to cross, trying to cross. But every time it got to this part, it kind of got a little hazy. Can't, can't really see that well. And as the generations kept going, the Lord says, because I saw them trying, because I saw the bloodline trying, because I saw the bloodline trying to live right, I'm going to enlighten you. You're part of the bloodline. So now the enlightenment comes, and now we're at this part of the bridge, and now we're holding up the lamp, which we're allowing the lamp, okay, and the light to shine. And now we're able to cross. Right? We're able to come across this bridge now. Most oftentimes, because we're so fleshed out, we say, well, I mean, I can understand where this could be. But great grandmama and them, they didn't do this. So, uh, you know. And we shun the revelation, not knowing they didn't do it because they didn't know. They wanted to cross the bridge. They wa- they had the light up, but just every time they came to this part, they just didn't quite understand. And since they didn't understand, they weren't able to go over. But then there are those of us, well, mama and them didn't go over, so I ain't going over. They didn't, they didn't go over, so I, what? <laughs> then the question is, why are we living? Why are we occupying God's breath when we don't want the lamp and the light? There's levels to this. Discern means to see, to recognize, to understand something that's not clear. When the Lord brings in a revelation, saints, and this revelation from the word of God becomes crystal clear. Crystal! And me and you, we're sitting beside each other. And the revelation is becoming crystal clear. And me and you decide That because we've never heard this before. And the Lord didn't give it to me. We decide. We're not going to receive this revelation. Because it's just just too much. Um, We're not going to receive this revelation. Because that means I have to tweak some things. And I don't feel like tweaking nothing. Everything has been fine. Everything is rolling fine. The money is coming in fine. I don't feel like tweaking nothing. So we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it like this. So no, you know, no. Do you know that in this, in this case, me and you don't have any discernment? None. Discernment means to see to recognize, to understand something that is not clear. So if this revelation has not been clear for all these years, someone comes in with a revelation and we see the revelation, we recognize what they're saying, we actually understand, now we might not tell them, but we actually understand what they're saying. And what was not clear is now crystal clear. And in that moment, we choose, me and you, we choose not to receive that revelation. Do you know what happens? It's dangerous. Do you know what happens? What happens is the Lord sees that as you and I rejecting discernment. So then once we get up, we feel good about the decision we've made. We get to keep everything like it is. 
everything is fine. 99.1 is great. We go on down the line. And when we need discernment, it's not there. <laughs> when we need discernment, when somebody else come into town, they come from across the waters, across the seas, they fly in. This is our buddy, buddy, buddy. And we let them in, right? We let them around, those we influence, and they take half the church. Now, they might not take half the church before they leave. But you look around in five months, six months, seven months, and over half the church is gone. Why? I mean, I thought everything was good and everything was good and everything's fine. Because once we start rejecting revelation, discernment do not stay. <laughs> once we start rejecting the healing of the word and the light of the word, discernment don't stick around. And before we know it, we, we can be had by anybody. We can be fooled by anybody. Anybody can come in and say we love you and we believe it. Not knowing that this is a wolf, a ravening wolf that's ready to go through the house and tear up the camp. But we become blind to what we're supposed to be seeing. Because when the Lord tried to show us, we desire to be blind. Does that make sense? I'm going to try to say it again. We become blind to what we need to see. Because when the Lord tried to show us and enlighten us, we desire to be blind. Because the word is a lamp and the law is a light. And anytime we reject the word of God, and then try to use that same word. The Lord says, I will turn you over. Because you, you're looking for something that's going to benefit your flesh. There are those that want the word in its entirety. And there are those that want a word that benefit their flesh. Going back to what we said. Because the word is a garment. Many times we don't bend our flesh to the word. Many times we take the word and we try to put it on. It's just like a person that wears three X trying to put on a small in T-shirt. They trying to put it on and they do what to the shirt? Stretch it out of proportion. Why? Because I got to get this shirt on how can i call myself a teacher and i don't have the shirt on how can i call myself a preacher a prophetess a prophet an apostle an evangelist how can i call myself a worker an ambassador and i don't have the shirt on so we try to stretch it and stretch it and the word of god says i'm not moving to fit you you will move to fit me you will lose this you will take this off. You will take that off. And once you've done that, the word will fit you. But many times we don't want to take flesh off. We don't want to take carnality off. We don't want to take what great grandmama and them told us. We don't want to take none of that stuff off. Not knowing that the Lord is going by that discernment. The discerning of hearts. And he saw great, great, great grandmama and them. They didn't go in because they didn't understand. He going to judge them different than he judged you. You know why? Because in your day, at this time, at this hour, I'm going to bring the enlightenment of this scripture and you rejected it. They didn't have it. They wanted it. You didn't know it. You didn't know that every time they got to this bridge and the light was out, they got discouraged. Like, Lord, we really, we really, it's not for your time to go across the bridge. I know you want to go, but it's not for your time to go across the bridge. So you're going to go and then, and then, then those that are born into you, they're going to go a little further. 
And then those that are born into you, they're going to go. But you know where we stop at? Well, great, great grandma and them didn't go, so I ain't going. That's foolish. That's foolish. When they wanted the light and, 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 and only got so much, they got a measure. Now the Lord brings in the 11th hour of the revelation. And we choose. Well, I remember when I was younger, maybe about eight or nine. And I was thinking to myself, I don't really want to accompany heaven if my family isn't there. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't really want to be in heaven if my family isn't there. And so at that time, I had begun to try to make a, a sense of it. Like, if my family isn't in heaven, you know, then I don't know what to, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I would do. Because I don't really want to go if they're not there. Now, that was when I was like around nine. But there are some that have not made a choice yet when it comes to even if the one that I say that I love, even if my kids say that, hey, love you, but we going this way. And it's not, it ain't got nothing to do with God. Some of us have not made the choice to separate and say, I'll be praying for you, but I'm not going to hell for you. You understand? Some of us have not made the choice to say, I'm not going to hell for no loved ones. I'm not going to hell for no friends. I'm not going to miss it for no coworkers or for no prestige in this life. I'm not going to miss. Some of us have not made the choice. Sometimes we haven't made the choice either because great grandma and them didn't know. And now it feels like because they didn't know, ooh, they should have knew that. Ooh, I don't know if they made it. So I'm just going to stick with what. Not knowing that the Lord judges the heart of man. <laughs> and where they could have been in a place where the Lord says, because in this time, this was going on, I'm going to let you in. He'll have compassion on whom he'll have compassion. But you, <laughs> you, I'm looking at you a whole lot different. Because you, sir, you, ma'am, you failed to make a decision between me and them. Now, them, they didn't fail to make a decision between me and you and them. Them, they just didn't have, they didn't have it all. So they just went on what they had. You, you're going to get judged because of, because you're going according to what they did. So basically, because you're rejecting the word, rejecting revelation, basically, you're choosing them as your God and not me. You will be judged for that. They're not going to be judged for choosing you over me. But you're going to be judged for choosing them over me and what I'm saying now. The preceding word. Do you understand? There are levels to this. And when we begin to talk about the spirit of discernment, it's not just walking around with an old judge and grudging spirit. The spirit of discernment can have two hookers on the street. And you can discern one of these do not want to be here. Or you can discern neither one of them want to be here. And what makes it so bad is one of these could have had your husband. But do you see how the spirit of discernment has to work in love and patience and long-suffering, mercy and grace? The spirit of discernment. Oh, hoochie, oh, ho, oh, hooker. No. 
No. Because at the end of the day, this don't make it right. But she's trying to feed her kids. Somebody got to see and discern past what done happened. Somebody got to see and discern that this young lady, this lady right here, don't want to do this no more. Don't want to be this. Is crying every night. God, if you are God, deliver me. And the Lord says, I will. And he looks for somebody that's got a real spirit of discernment. Who can see past what they're looking at. Don't think the enemy. Oh, the enemy. Yeah. The enemy is going to try because he loves to keep people snared and traps. He'll try to go ahead. And, and, and cause this hooker, this hole, this whoever it is, to do something foul. Knowing that you're the very one that can speak life into them. Right? And in that moment, we choose. Are we daughters and sons? Or, or, or is this woman to woman? Is this man to man? Or do we acknowledge God in all our ways and he direct our path? The spirit of discernment. It's so important in these times to have the spirit of discernment. Because we're not going to make it without it. We're not going to stop judging people harshly without the spirit of discernment. There are levels to this because where sin abound, grace has to much more abide. When grace abides, love covers a multitude of sin. Love don't give a pass. Nope. Love holds up the lantern, the light, the lamp. Love says this is the revelation. We don't do that. Love sends a rebuke. It's better than private love. Open rebuke. Love does that. Love does that. We got it twisted. Love don't do that. Love takes them in the privacy and say, okay, okay, okay. And then before we know it, they're doing it again and again and again. Why? Because they needed that shame to shake and rattle them to make them stop. They needed that open shame. They needed that ingredient. They need to feel overwhelmed. How do I know? Because I've watched the ones that have gotten open rebukes for years and years and years and years. Since I was a little girl, I've watched the ones that have gotten open rebukes. And the ones that have gotten open rebukes They stayed on the Lord's side. And I'm not talking about on level one or level two. We good right here. That's kind of like Lot. You know, Lot, the angel told you what to do. And the angel told you where to go, Lot. But you know what? You said that staying right here was good enough. You said this we don't have to go this far. This this part right here, this place right here, this place is good enough for us to do it. And the best thing to do 
is to do what had been instructed. That's the best thing to do. Saints, I pray that something was said on this morning to enlighten you, inspire you, to let us know that there really are different levels to this. There are different levels to the spirit of discernment. And with the spirit of discernment, you can watch a person for years and still not get it. Because we're watching mannerisms, we're watching uh, swag, we're watching all type of things instead of discerning the word, the heart, spirit. The spirit. We go over here to Luke 12 and 56. It says, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not discern this time? How is it that you can discern what you want to discern, but you don't discern this time, these times? How is it that we kill, we continue to kill those that have a pure heart and a right spirit and we keep alive those that feel like 88.6 is good enough. 80.1 is good enough for us. How is it that we kill those with a pure heart and a right spirit and keep others alive? Saints, it's a curse. Can we see this is what they did to Jesus back in the day? And it's a continuing on. You would think somewhere, because we have the totality of the scriptures, we would think somewhere that you and I will become more wise because we have the the word of God. We will become more wise to see that most oftentimes the one that is beaten and shunned, mocked, most oftentimes, that's the one. Most oftentimes, that's going to be the one with the pure heart and right spirit. When I was growing up, the ones that I remember that just used to get rebuked and rebuked and rebuked, when I look back, I see that these were the ones that were real. They were not playing no games, you know? And so with that being said, should me and you not take a pause break when it comes to discerning my brother's spirit, discerning my sister's spirit? Is this of God? If they're not correct, is their heart posture toward God? And if so, they will receive what I have to tell them. They will receive the revelation of what might be wrong in their life. They will be open to receive the lamp and the light. If the spirit that I'm perceiving is right in them, if the spirit that I'm discerning is upright in them, but it seems like this part of that is wrong, when I go to them and share the lamp and the light, they will be open-hearted to receive it. If the spirit in them is not upright and the spirit in them is faulty, when I go to them with the lamp and the light, the true test is to go to them with the lamp and the light and say the word says this, 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 and this. And if they reject it and shun it, and sister, you know, I don't, I don't know you got me wrong, or brother, I don't know you got me wrong, then that spirit ain't quite right. Discerning of spirits, discerning of spirits is not 
well, he don't have on Michael Corpse and she don't have on Chanel. So, and that, you know, her, that spirit, that didn't, it, you know, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And if we're still in the place of discerning spirits by what somebody got on, we're in trouble. You believe that? We're in trouble if we're discerning spirits by what somebody is wearing and how much money they have. That's a problem. When Jesus said, the son of man have nowhere to lay his head and he had God living inside of him. We think because of what somebody has makes them right. This is how the wolves have escalated through the land because the saints are not looking through faith, but we're looking with our natural eyes and we're being fooled because we reject revelation. So now when we reject revelation, we reject discernment <laughs> and we think discernment is going to be there when we need it. And it's not, 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 not going to be there because it all comes together. The spirit of discernment with love and patience and long suffering. Do we have the spirit of discernment on today, saints? Because I don't know if you know it or not, but what the Lord is telling us today is that sin is abounding. And because sin is abounding, grace has too much more abound. What does that mean? That means it's time to go up another level. Amen. You can't, we can't stay on the level. Well, they only got a few people in their church, so they can't be preaching that that well. Well, they, you know, it's only this and it's only that. I'm telling you, if we stay on that level, sin will overtake us. So on this morning, on this Sunday morning, it's up to us, saints. Are we going to go up another level to stay ahead of the devil? Or are we going to let him overtake us in our sin? We get to decide that. Next Sunday, I believe, is the 19th of May. And that is the um, Feast of Pentecost. And I'm pretty excited about that, Saint. The Feast of Pentecost. Um, let's see here. Yeah. The Feast of Pentecost is going to be next Sunday. And um, pretty excited about it. Yeah. May 19th. It's going to be on a Sunday. On the Feast of Pentecost, Christians commemorate the, de the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles gathered around the mother of the Lord. The feast is celebrated on the 50th and final day of the Easter season. The Feast of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost leads us and guides us in all truth and righteousness. And when we shun the Holy Ghost, how do we shun the Holy Ghost? We don't just walk around and say, well, I don't need the Holy Ghost. No, we don't do that. But when it comes to different situations where we need the Lord to tell us yes or no, a lot of times that's when we shun the Holy Ghost. We shut the Holy Ghost off. Because we want to make the decision, right? We want to make the decision of what we're going to do without acknowledging God in all our ways and letting him direct our path, right? And since we want it to go our way, then when we need the Holy Ghost, he's like, mm, I don't know. The ingredient that we're missing is the Holy Ghost. Do you know that if we kept the Feast of Pentecost, it it's like having a flashlight. 
these feast days are like having a flashlight. You take that flashlight, you shine the flashlight on, um, shine that flashlight on the Feast of Pentecost and why? Okay, well, I just read that verbatim from the internet. I don't know about that gathering around the mother of the Lord and all that stuff. But I like to focus on the Feast of Pentecost where Christians commemorate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. That's what mattered. The Holy Ghost being descended upon the apostles. If we took the light every year and shine the flashlight on that, what would happen is it would bring the enlightenment and the question, why is hardly nobody getting the Holy Ghost today? <laughs> right? But if we say, I'm not keeping no feast and no Pentecost, no nothing like that. Like, nobody is really talking about the Holy Ghost anymore. It's almost like a thing of the past. If you got it 20 years ago, good for you because ain't nobody talking about it today. Nobody's trying to get it today. Nobody's asking the Lord for it today, right? Why? Because the church has lost its footing. The Holy Ghost is rarely spoke about. Because if we can be honest, do we still believe that the Lord is giving the Holy Ghost out? The Lord is still giving the Holy Ghost out. He's still filling people with the Holy Ghost. The difference is people that are filled with the Holy Ghost have moved every single idol out of the way. In today's time, we kind of sort of feel like it's a little just just 5% healthy to have an idol down here, whether it be a leader, teacher, reacher. It's kind of a little 10% healthy to have an idol. Any idols in the way, any idols in the way causes the Holy Ghost to not desire to move there. Any idols in the way, any idols in the way. And the Holy Ghost is like, mm. So maybe we don't talk about the Holy Ghost a lot because we feel like it's a lot of work. Because in this time, I mean, come on, there's a lot of idols, right? People idolize clothes, shoes, purses, cologne, perfume. People idolize cars, houses, land. People idolize so much stuff, churches and you know, this is us doing right, wrongly. We idolize churches, leaders. We idolize. We just idolize. We idolize so much stuff. And it hinders the Holy Ghost from doing what he has to do. The spirit of discernment takes the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has the fruit of the Spirit, which we need in order to discern. Right? The Holy Ghost is going to have the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit we need in order to discern on this level. Discerning without looking at what a person has, what a person has on, the spirit of discernment. We're going up another level now. Anybody that's looking on a lower level 
is going to be overtaken by sin, which is abounding. The Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit. Discernment. Discernment is discerning what's right and what's almost right. 